Hi, this will be a video series on mocking up your projects with Xcode. Xcode is a tool from Apple that is used to create um, mobile apps for iOS devices. And this is the tool that Apple uses, so it's, you know, it's pretty much the tool, right? Um, so what I'd like to do here is I'd like to make uh, a mock-up of a mobile app. It'll pretty much act just like a mobile app, but it won't have any code in it, right? It'll, it'll just mock up and allow us to navigate from screen to screen and kind of mock up the user interface elements, okay? And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to launch Xcode, and then I'm going to create a new project. I can just click this button here that says Create New Xcode Project, or you can go to the File menu and choose New. Actually, I'm in QuickTime Player. Let me click on Xcode here. There we go, Xcode File, uh, New Project, right? So either that or click the New Project button, right? And what we'll do is we'll start with this um, single view application. And if you don't see this here, you'll want to go to iOS application and then choose single view application here. Okay, This is pretty much just an empty project that doesn't have anything in it. Okay, So we're just going to start from scratch with nothing. Okay, And you'll see we can build a project pr fairly quickly with, uh, with the storyboard um, feature that they have. So I'll call this... Um, uh, mock-up. How about that, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the pro uh, product name. You can fill out your organization name and your identifier. And then um, the language will be Swift. And then we can set the device for iPhone. Maybe we'll plan this as just a, only an iPhone app. It'll keep things simpler. And then we can uncheck all of these boxes here. We don't need any of these things for this project. So I'm going to click the Next button. And uh, then I'm going to save my project into a folder. And maybe I'll put it in here, right? And there we go. So the first thing is that when we're in Xcode, this is our project navigator. You've got to be on the little folder here, OK? And you'll see a list of all the files in your project. And we can pretty much ignore everything here for this example except for the one item here called Main Storyboard. And this is where we're going to do a majority of our work. So I'll, I'll click on Main Storyboard, and then the storyboard will load in the editor pane here. And what we're going to see is just one single view controller here to start with. And so this view controller um, is you know one screen of our project. Okay, so imagine if you had, uh, you know, an app that you were building and it had multiple screens. This would represent one of those screens. Okay, so you might have a login screen. You might have a, you know, a, a list screen to list all your friends or something. You might have another screen that, you know, has a map on it or something, right? Okay, and each one of those would be a view controller. So the view controller, um, right now you can see it's sort of a square. And, um, you know, there's no phones that are square. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the view controller, make sure it has a blue outline. And then over here where it says simulated metrics, we're going to look for size. And if you don't see this, make sure this blue one is the, is the center one right there, right? The little arrow down. So, you know, these each show different bits of information. We want to click on this one. They call this the attribute inspector, right? And so we'll go to size here. And we can set the size to any one of the device sizes, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan this project around, let's say, the, um, the iPhone um, 6. So I think that's the 4.7-inch phone, OK? So our screen will look like this, right? OK. Now down at the bottom here, and you may not see this. It may be you know, all the way down. And if you don't see it, click on the little circle with the square in it, and it'll open up, up another pane down here. And this pane lists all of the objects that you can create in Storyboard. So all the yellow ones are view controllers, and they're all variations of the view controller. So this first one is an empty view controller, just like we have here. And then this is a, a, a navigation controller, a table view controller, a collection view controller. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ones there, right? Um, below that, these other elements, the, the not yellow ones, right? These are interface elements that you can use 
inside of the view controller. So this is a UI label. It represents um, a text, usually a single line of text. This can actually contain multiple lines, but uh, usually it's a single line of text. And this text is not editable. So, you know, you can't edit the text in here. You're, you're, if you have one of these, you're, you know, you're, you're planning to just show some information, you're not actually going to edit it, right, in your app. Um, the next, we have a, a button here, right? So here's the button. So if you have something that someone needs to tap on to create an action, right, we can use the button for that. And then there's a segmented controller. And the segmented controller is a standard user interface element that lets you choose um, one of you know, several different options, okay? So, you know, you can pick one of these two here, and, and you can give, like, all of these elements have options over here on the bar, and you can see when I'm on the segmented controller, it says segments, and we can change the number of segments to, you know, three or four or more, right? So I'll, you know, we can use the control handles to expand these, right? And you can, if you double-click on this, you can make another you know, another um, label. You, for some reason, you kind of have to click in this upper corner here to get it to work, right? So anyway, so there we got four items, right? I won't go over all of the interface elements here. We'll just use a few of these for this project, right? But it'll give you a good idea how they all work. So uh, maybe we need another item here. And this, I'm going to drag this in here. This is the text field. And the text field allows you to enter text. So if you have a single line of text that you want to enter, this is a text. This is what you're going to use. Um, you know, think about typing in your username or your password or something, right? Okay. So there's our, our project there. So what are we going to do with all this stuff? Well, what we want to do is we want to lay out our, our app, okay? So imagine that um, you want to create a login screen, okay? So uh, how would I do that? So maybe I'll, I'll put a label here, you know, we could say login, right? And then um, maybe I'll have a button down at the bottom here that says login, right? And then I probably don't need the segmented controller but maybe I need a couple of these um, these uh, text fields here, right? So now this looks, you know, okay. It, it's not very exciting though, right? So, you know, you probably want to design this. And we'll add other views and connect the views together where you can click this button to go to another view. But for right now, let's just talk about designing this, right? So you want some options to be able to edit all of these things. So first of all, the label. So looking at the attribute inspector here, you can see that you can um, set the text of the label. You can also double click it here to change the text, okay? Um, you can set the color of the label. So you can pick a color off the menu here, or make it gray, or you, know, or you can pick any color here off the color picker, right? Okay, um, you can set the font. So, you know, this is, if I click on the little T here, like the little arrow here lets you increase the font size, and you can see the text kind of disappears. I'll need to increase the size of the, of the label, right? Maybe I'll use the alignment here to put the text in the middle. Um, and then you can click on the T here, and you can go through the options in the font, um, in the font options here to, uh, you know, choose a different font family, um, choose a style for the font. You know, I'll do semi-bold, right? Um, you know, and you can pick a different font, too, if you want in there. There's, if you, you know, these are the system fonts, so these are the default iOS fonts. If you choose custom from the top of the menu here, then you can pick any font you want, okay? Um, maybe I'll do this one, right? So that looks okay. And then uh, let's move on to the text field. So the text field here, imagine this is your username, and then this is the, your password, right? So for the username, if I, if I click on this, maybe I want it to have a, a placeholder text that says username on it. So, you know, you can see here I've got text field, and it says plain text, and then you can type the text that you want to have displayed in the text field here. This is, you know, actually in the field, though, so it's an entry, right? You can set the color of the text. 
um, you know, by choosing the color here, the same as the label, right? You can align the text if you like. And then there's this item here that says placeholder. So placeholder is sort of, you know, ghost text that sits in the field and it kind of acts as a label. So, you know, we can see this and we know that we have to type the username in and then this the, the placeholder text will disappear after we start typing, okay? And, and there's a bunch of other options here, okay? Um, so anyway, so that, that gets you started there. So then we've got the password field. So, you know, password, this is a text label too. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go to placeholder here and I'll, I'll type in password, right? Okay, um, so that's pretty good. So then we've got the button down here. So there's our button. And uh, the button, you know, you can see it. Here's the button options. And it's got a few different um, things you can do. You can put a, put a picture in there and you can set the color of the text. Okay, um, you can also give it a shadow. And then um, if you keep scrolling down, you can also give it a background color. Okay. So, um, so then that all works pretty good, right? So there's our background color. We can pick any color we want, right? Um, and then you can make the button a little bit bigger too. So if you, you know, if you have this color there, maybe you want to show the color in an area around the button, okay? So all of this works pretty good. Um, but, you know, there's more stuff that you might want to do, especially design-wise, okay? So... You know, there, there isn't a lot of options here for modifying the text field or the, the button that's built in, though you can modify them, okay? So, so the button can actually have rounded corners, um, you know, it can have a stroke around it. There's, there's a few things you can do, but you just can't do them in the default, you know, with the default options here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you go, I'll put a link to this in the video in the notes under the video, but I'm going to go to my, my Gist Hub account. So I went to my GitHub account, and I have a couple Gists here. One of them is called custombutton.swift. And what I'll do is I'll find this one, and I'm just going to copy the contents here of all this code. It's really not that much code, right? So I'll just copy that. And what I'll do is I'll go to Swift. I know I said there would be no code, but after we, we're just going to paste this. We don't actually have to uh, write it all. So I'm going go to go to Swift here, and then I'm going to get a file here, uh, just a regular Swift file. So I'll just do uh, Command-N, right? So I just did Command-N there. Or you can do um, File, New File, right? And uh, we want to go to iOS source and then Swift file, okay? And we'll name this file custom button. Don't put any spaces in the name here. Actually, I guess it doesn't really even matter, but uh, let's try and keep that kind of a computer-friendly name so no spaces or special characters in there. And then I'll click create, and it'll ask me where I want to save the file, and it'll... I guess it doesn't even ask, it just puts it in the folder there. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll, you can leave the comment here if you like, or you can even get rid of that, and then I'm just going to delete what's there and then paste everything that I got from GitHub, okay? And so this, other, other than that, we don't even need to look at this. So this, um, this class is called Custom Button, and what it does is it adds a couple features to the button and storyboard, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the button here in Storyboard. Make sure it's selected. It'll say Button there. And then we want to go to this little newspaper right here. It's called the Identity Inspector. And when I click on that, it brings up a pane here that says Custom Class. And what we want to do is we want to type into the Class field here. We want to type Custom Button. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're essentially just assigning this code from custom button to the button here. And the, the custom button class, if we look at it again, you know, if you're interested in the Swift end of this, it says class, name is custom button, colon, and then it says the subclass. So this class subclasses the UI button, right? So it essentially is a UI button with some extra features, okay? So, um, and then I actually just, while we're there, um, it says IB designable. So this means that any features that we have here that change the, the look of the button, they'll be, that new 
look will be reflected in storyboard. So we'll see it or see the changes that we make in storyboard, right? It'll update the shape of the button in storyboard or the color, right? And then um, these values here that are marked IB inspectable, these are allowed, we're allowed to access and edit those from the, um, from the storyboard inspector or attributes panel, okay? So anyway, so let's go back to storyboard. And so now when I look at this button, you know, I, I, I kind of like it. Um, and let's see how big it is. I'm going to change it. Let's, it says 55. Let's make it exactly 50 pixels, right? Tall. I just clicked on the little ruler there and changed the height. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the attribute inspector. And you can see here's button. But now we've got these extra properties from the custom button class, right? And the first one here is the border color. And then there's the border width. And then there's the corner radius. So if you remember, I gave the button a height of 50. So what I'll do is I'm going to change the corner radius to 25. Okay, and now you can see I have a button with rounded corners. So that, that gives us a little more design opportunity here in, um, in Xcode. Maybe I'll change this background color. I don't, I don't really like that color. Um, let's make it, uh, we'll just make it gray for now. And if I'm going to do gray, maybe I'll make the text color a different color too. Make it white, and maybe we can make the text a little bigger. You know, something like that, right? So now that's a little more interesting, okay? Um, so anyway, that'll get us started on this, right? And you can do that with anything. So if I wanted to make a second button, like maybe I need a button to go to a sign-up page, right? So I'll, I'll drag this down here. To, I, I option drag to create a copy. And I'll change this to sign up, right? And maybe the sign up button, I want to use a different style on it to show that it's not the main button here. So I'll select it. And this also, since I copied it, it has the, uh, the custom button subclass there, right? And so, you know, I, I have the border and the width and the corner radius. So maybe I'll get rid of the background color. I can click over here and uh, you got to click on this little blue thing all the way on the right. And what I'll actually in this one right here. And then I'll choose this default, which is th the one with the slash is a transparent color. So I'll choose that. And then I'll change the text color to, uh, to a gray. And then I think what I'll do is I'll go to the border here and I'll give it a two pixel border radius. And then set the border color to one of these colors here. Right? Well, look, there I've got a button with an outline, right? So anyway, so that's what we can do with the custom button. And, you know, that'll give us more opportunity to, you know, design a little bit in, in Storyboard, okay? So I'll continue the rest of this in, in the next video, okay? And thanks for watching.